What up, y'all? All right, today I just want to go over, um, I'm going to call this like the, the narc total, the narcissist total. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of going to describe some things that are kind of offshoot theories. And uh, tell me in the comments below uh, what your thoughts are to this, okay, to all this. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is like, so they have the, uh, you know, the trombone and, and it goes as the idolization uh, and then the devalue discard, right? And then they come back and hoover you and it's just a circle. But what they're doing is is just perpetuating evil, right? So you have an evil individual that will take positive or negative supply, okay? And then they will um, take all the admiration that you will give them in the beginning, uh, and then they're lying to you in the beginning with the love bomb phase, and then they will uh, devalue you uh, pretty much of all your gifts, and then they will destroy you and leave you, right? And then they will just continue to do that over and over again. And that's a cycle, and it's just evil um, that continually does evil to perpetuate and sustain evil. And that's pretty much the cycle of the trauma bond. And when you continue down that road, um, it will continually de degrade you, demoralize you, and uh, it will make that trauma in your life continue to escalate. And you have to heal from trauma. You can't continue to destroy yourself with these individuals. It just gets worse. Um, next is, you know, they get negative or positive energy, but the whole thing is out for your destruction. So they can't do good. They cannot do goodness. It's impossible for the narcissist to do goodness. And um, the thing that gets me is, it's like, they can get negative or positive energy, it doesn't matter, but they prefer negative energy over positive energy. What does that say? You know, what, what are we dealing with here, you know? I think um, it's interesting because I think that the positive energy they get, they almost have to convert it to negative energy, you know, and uh, the negative energy they can just suck up right away. Yeah, you know, the 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 demon or whatever it is inside them that is doing all of this uh, to destroy empaths on the earth today. The next thing is, is like they mirror people back to themselves. So it's, they can't, ex they can't uh, sustain existence through the eyes of others. They, uh, they don't, and they don't have to know what they're doing uh, or be self-conscious to do evil. Uh, but they, they have no inner core self. Uh, and so they, uh, they're, they're perpetuating this evil and there's nothing in there. And so it makes you question what the heck is in there, you know, or if they're in there, why do they need all this fuel unless they just can't sustain themselves with energy? They do not create energy enough to sustain themselves like they have no battery. Um, so they have to go out and destroy people and take their soul essence. Um, the next thing is they will uh, turn your own inner light against you. Um, that's what they do in dealing with the narcissist. They get you to attack yourself, to fight yourself. They put down your inner um, intuition and make you think from your mind and your emotions, which they have hijacked. And then uh, when they devalue you, they take all of your, uh, one, a lot of times, a lot of your good, good uh, attributes and they will turn them against you and they will use them against you. You know, it's like the accuser of the brethren uh, is what Satan's called. And so it's interesting how that's what they will do to you. And so uh, you uh, will be burned by your own inner light and until you wake up to this, and um, you use it the right way, the correct way to incinerate them out of your life. Okay. Next is uh, the narc is a cluster B, right? So that then there's also, um, you know, like you may have uh, cluster B some traits. Like we all have like maybe some narcissistic trait uh, or traits, but not, you know, be narcissists, right? Um, we all have uh, the possibility of that, but also there's also cluster A and there's cluster C, right, to this um, DSM-5. So the cluster A 
um, is around and, and along the lines of schizophrenia, paranoia, and stuff like that. And then, you know, the cluster uh, C is kind of like in the anxious type category, maybe obsessive compulsive and stuff like that. Uh, the point to all this is, is just like when the cluster B is with you, they may pull out um, and make surface. Maybe you, if you have a, a narcissistic trait, it may start to show itself more. They may kind of uh, antagonize it to come out more. But also when it comes to the cluster A and the C, it will definitely, if you have deep underlying, like so just like it ain't even that big a deal typically, but now that you're with the narcissist, you may start to see this um, anxiety and this type of paranoia, you know, uh, that is from, you know, maybe little tidbits of maybe you have part of your personality uh, derived from a little bit of A, maybe a small, small percentage and a little bit of C. Now those are going to be exacerbated. And so you're going to see those perform much worse and show up in your life now because uh, you're, you know, pretty much destroying yourself. And so these are going to uh, come out. You'll know this when you get devalued and discard is that anxiety is huge and that paranoia is pretty huge too, at least for a time and that rumination. Uh, you know, they say also, this is a interesting topic that the narcissist goes for the cancer on the ast astrology chart, you know, like, um, and it's interesting because I am a cancer, but I also um, remember that my ex-wife who I was married to, that was the borderline narcissist, whatever that I, um, that's my position on the diagnosis, but I don't diagnose. I'm just, that's what I believe that she was, but I, I don't, that's just uh, neither here nor there, but um, that her ex-boyfriend before me was also a cancer. So that was very interesting. Um, I guess that that is their, uh, maybe that's their per first choice um, based on the way that the cancer is built. We are, we do tend to be more uh, emotional, generally speaking. Um, but uh, that's not a good thing. It's just showing you uh, kind of uh, some of their, the way that they, what they look for and target. Narcissism, uh, it, it's kind of like a spiritual virus. You know, I call it like the black goo. You know, I don't know if you ever seen that movie Venom where that guy got covered in black goo uh, and then, you know, became that whatever he was that, you know, I don't know, that monster. And so it's kind of like this is this is this is what they, they're they are. They're like black goo. And, and I, I this is speculatory whether black goo actually exists or not. Uh, people have talked about it. It's been in games and movies and stuff, but. Um, and they say it would, uh, it, it would either, uh, horribly, uh, make something horribly die or, or you'd become a monster yourself if it got a hold of you. But I just using that as a, uh, uh, just to signify that this is a spiritual disease and, uh, it's running rampant these days. Uh, the narc, uh, also the narcissist, uh, purposefully, when they break up with you, the devalue and the discard, the discard ends with a manufactured, a, 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 a manufacturing of an abrupt death of the spouse or the significant other. So, and, and this is known as one of the worst things that can occur in an individual is, uh, as far as trauma goes, in an individual, uh, when they have somebody that they care about or love, um, a significant other, and they suddenly have a death, that significant other goes through a lot of trauma. Um, and so this is kind of what the narcissist does to you when they they leave and they just shut you off and they ghost you. It's like you're dealing with a death um, because you can't even get a hold of them a lot of times. They will a lot of times ghost you, they'll be on block and they'll be with a new supply and uh, that's part of your punishment. But, you know, there's also other motives behind this, but um, just dealing with the trauma that comes along with that. And then they come back and they will do it over and over again if you allow them to. And this kind of trauma, to deal with this on a daily or, um, you know, it's a very impactful as you continue down these roads and you're telling your body, your cells and your whole makeup of your body that you don't love your body, you don't care about your body. 
And so you got to be careful with that because you want to heal. And to heal is to get away from these individuals when you wake up as quickly and as, as um, uh, peaceful as possible, but never to go back. Um, so they just, they, they, they simulate this, then they ghost you. Um, and this will be many times in your relationships till you wake up. Uh, this is trauma, y'all. Um, some speculate that the narcissist solus or, or they have no astral, um, type of body. Now, I don't know too much about astral projection and stuff like that, but I do kind of, it did kind of come to a little bit of an understanding. It's kind of like inside your shell and those in the spinal, uh, in your spinal cord and stuff. It has these chakras and stuff like that. I don't, I don't want to get into that because that to me is kind of like, um, new age stuff, but there is something to say about, um, where your energy exists. And if they don't have, for instance, a soul, if they don't have their, uh, uh, you know, astral aura or whatever, then, you know, they're, they're, uh, you know, soulless and, their astral body, I mean, that, the way it is explained kind of helps you to understand how you understand and deal with, uh, love and, and happiness and, and, and good traits and how they, uh, the, how they hit you, you know, and if they don't have that, it would make a little bit more sense, but it, they, if they don't have it, it's because they, uh, per, I believe in my personal opinion, my humble opinion that they've turned it off. It's not something that just they were born without. This is something they gave up on. Uh, they um, purposefully sold their souls, gave themselves up or, um, you know, something along those lines, unless they were actually, like I say, I've said many times, were they possibly born uh, maybe as demons in human form uh, as an opportunity as testers. I mean, it's possible. Or they could be like fallen angels in human form forced to reincarnate. I know we don't, but you, we don't know exactly what God has decided for the the fallen hosts or what he has uh, put into their uh, damnation, you know? So, um, you know, that, that's why they have to go outside uh, to collect energy outside of the body because there's nothing in there. And that's why they're running around to collect, uh, you know, sin and, or I mean, soul energy all the time because they are, there's nothing in there. It's just like an empty shell. It's almost like if there was a clone and, uh, you know, there was nothing, God didn't place like a good spirit in it. It would be just an empty host for a demon, but then it would need to get energy really to truly survive. And uh, they have no emotion, so that's what they need to make them complete as far as uh, to look uh, f completely fake, right? But to look complete as a fake is to f be able to take that emotional energy and use it for themselves. I think it would make them look more authentic is my point. Um and so their aura seems to be, or is possible that, you know, when they look gray and ashen, that's their aura. You know, we can have a bright one. You could also look into their eyes and tell that there's nothing in there. A lot of times, um, they always tear you down, uh, because, so they, they think you're weak. They always portray you as the weak one, but you're not the weak one. They are, you may have been weak to a degree because you were unawake, unawoke, and you were being kind of mistreated and used or fallen into the traps that we did early on. But after you wake like we have, um, that we are uh, one of the stronger ones in this world as, as long as we, you know, um, protect ourselves with good boundaries, stay away from uh, evil and, uh, and, and energy vampires, know how to stay close to your frame. And, uh, you know, continue to cultivate healing in your life because um they are envious of you and they try to take you down and destroy you which shows that they're very weak um when you got to do that to an individual um you know two things there's one there's definitely an agenda here by the enemy uh but number two is when you have to take somebody down 
uh, to feel good about yourself, uh, you're, you're very weak. You're the weakest. Um, so everything is flip-flopped with them. Uh, you know, I said when we, what we love is, is what they hate. They, they are, their love is hate, you know, and you know, if you love them today, they're going to hate you today. If you hate them tomorrow, they'll love you to tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, they're just totally flip-flops. So when they tell you that they're so powerful, it's actually the opposite. We are probably, um, a lot more powerful than we think, but you know, we don't want to let that get to our head. God is only gives you power um, a lot of times, not when you're talking about the enemy side, because the enemy side is just, um, you know, uh, it, it will be below you if you operate correctly. And, you know, but when it comes to God's uh, side, as far as the loving kindness and power over things, he only gives it mainly to the meek and the humble. So, you have to stay humble for you to gain power and for him to use you. Um, it takes humility and for you to, um, you know, uh, ask for the Lord to use you, right? Um, and then give him the glory. But, um, okay, so, uh, yeah, so they're always trying to take you down. Um, and they, uh, you know, we always say they have the ability to read your thoughts, right? But... This is the thing. Um, they're able to read your thoughts uh, a lot of times if you think about it because they um, they take your... Uh, when they get supply from you, right? They... Um, they it's it, Yes, it's a, it's a tension uh, type supply, but it's also um, has to have emotions involved in it. You know? And so when they... Uh, are ripping uh, this uh, energy from you, right? They uh, they are um, taking your uh, soul energy and they're ripping it from you, okay? And so it's basically, when they're doing that, they're also taking uh, pieces and particles in my, in my humble opinion. Like I said, this is all theor theoretical. But they're taking pieces and particles and they're taking your emotion and they're bringing it into their their uh, hemisphere or whatever in their orbit and they're sucking it into them and then they're switching it. That's why you kind of feel like them after and they feel like you and they walk away happy and you walk away sad and anxious and depressed. Um, but also my point is, is, you know, we always say that they can read you and it's like telepathy. Uh, that they have the ability to do things that is just amazing sometimes on in the dark arts. And how are they able to do that? Well, if they're taking your emotional energy, right, and, and taking it into their uh, uh, portals, well, then let's think about it. If they're able to define that, then they're able to uh, understand what you're thinking and what you're going through based on the emotions that they have sucked out of you. Um, so, uh, that's an interesting one in itself because, um, that's how they can read you. They can read your thoughts, but, you know, and sometimes they can know things that you didn't even know, uh, uh, that you didn't even tell them, but it, it's based on this. And in my humble opinion, and they know what injuries you have, they know how to hurt you. They know all of these things. And it comes from your emotional field, in my humble opinion, um, and they're ripping this energy from you. It's your essence. It's not just attention. It's attention filled with emotions. Okay. And that's what true narcissistic supply is. Um, and that's how they have the ability to read you well. Um, it's obviously true that they don't have the ability to sustain themselves on their own energy. They need substance and the substance of the fuel is soul energy and, and emotional soul energy. And so it's it's like there's more to it and that's what they do. Um, and I, I don't know it, what they're doing with all this energy. They're either sacrificing it to the demon in them or if they need it just to house this deadened body uh, that has no battery because it's soulless and it doesn't have the ability to create energy so they have to run around and get it and suck it from everybody. Um, 
they're they're probably not in there at all if they are they're uh not in control i would say just like a company has uh 51 percent uh ownership then they have all the control right they're the ones that uh decide make all the decisions well i would say that whatever is in them if there is a a uh was a a, a a person in there before that that demon or the demons or whatever that is that's in there has 51 percent control over that body and has the control over it because you can't get any answers out of them they can't explain anything to you uh, they they refuse to about how they ended up this way um and what's going on in there and they never change you know and so that means that they have no control over at this point um and so they have cold empathy and that's why they call them reptilian and um i used to say that they're not humanity but they're mammals but they're not even mammals and the reason why they call them uh reptilians is because reptilians see mammals can feel emotions but reptilians cannot and also uh you can't you can kind of conversate or kind of have some sort of way to get through to a mammal but you can't like like a cow or a horse or something and you can express things to them that they will understand but you can't to a reptilian to a reptile uh mostly um and a lot of times a lot of the reptiles when they would have babies they would just leave them you know leave the eggs and just take off and they just uh they don't have a whole lot of emotions and it's funny because they talk about crocodile tears but crocodile tears is is only like they only tear up to lubricate their eyes when they're chewing on their prey um but i want to cut this short the narc female does not like men not masculine men the jezebel and uh you know same thing the, the male uh, effeminate narcissist doesn't like real women because he's <laughs> the woman um so they switch roles here and they always love doing that that's why the jezebel wants to make you uh you know basically an effeminate male if she's with you for a long period of time if you let them they will take your masculinity away and they'll make you a um a punk but uh you know so they they also have to do this love bomb phase right away because they know what they're doing uh and they have to get you hooked and it's like a biochemical you know situation it's um it's a pump up deflate it's a hot and a cold and it neurochemically gets you hooked and they have to do this right away because if they do it right away and get you hooked then you won't leave you won't be able to right away you know and if they don't do it right away then you will leave because you will not have that trauma bond built in you and so you won't be uh basically under that seduction so they know what they're doing from the start um, or, you know, regardless, uh, this is what's happening. And if you think that, uh, the beginning of the love bomb phase is good, it's not either. Um, a nar nar narcissists are like hell's conduit on the earth. They have to have conduit up here to get through, right? Um, so they, they, uh, the narcissist gets taken over and then, uh, it's, they, they, it shuts off the love centers and, uh, which has already been done, I would say. And then they turn on Hell's switchboard and do what they're told. And, you know, they could all work as a hive mind, which seems to be. That's why they always run in packs. When you wake up to narcissism, you find they're all over the place. Um, and when you're with a narcissist, that they're all over the place. Um, but uh, they, um, they have three tests, they say, that the narcissist, uh, to get... Uh, completely uh, have power over the narcissist as a survivor is, I don't know if this is true, but um, I've dealt with some of this, but it says like, you'll first deal with the overt narcissist, which I don't think I ever have, but then then you'll deal with uh, breaking free from the covert narcissist. And then the third thing uh, that you'll have to deal with is, is to break free from the covert narcissist that believes that they're a survivor of narcissism and they're an empath. <laughs> um, and so... I don't know. I'm just throwing all this out there, but, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, that's, that's about all I wanted to say, but they don't have ownership and control over themselves. And I wonder if, you know, because 
you know, at some point, if you decide to shut off love, then right then and there, you could become the manifestation of a demon. So maybe they didn't get infilled as much as they just became the manifestation of a demon when they shut off love, because without love, you have none of those good uh, features, those good attributes as far as forgiving, getting forgiveness and all that. So it does make you a complete blasphemy to God. So you cannot uh, reverse blasphemy. So I think it's possible for them to become the embodiment of their own demon uh, after that. And then at that point, they're taken over completely so they can become housed with more. But that's why you can't, maybe you can't deliver them because of that. But I'm going to leave it here. I may uh, do, I'm going to do a, a couple of two or three part series on, on kind of like demons and uh, how they came about in the biblical nature of things. And uh, so look, look, uh, look for that. I'm going to do a two or three part series. All right. Um, give me a like, a thumbs up and a um, subscription. Love y'all. Peace out. Stay tall, soldier up. We out.